Welcome back to our next episode of Round the Table Talk with your host, Duane. And your girl, Carrie, of course. Yeah, we don't know the thing, Gary. It's all about Round the Table Talk, my people. And we have a lovely guest right here beside us. You see me? But before we introduce our guest, you know, we just want to big up with sponsors, Pretty Business. Talk, my baby. Yes, guys. So for all your dark spots and your hyperpigmentation, visit www.prettybusiness.com. You can also find them over at Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Pretty Business. So we're going to just run and get to the products. Yeah, and while you're getting your product, guys, remember to use promo code Kerry and Duane 25 for a bundle of, when I say bundle, I mean enough. Enough off. So run, go shop your pretty business skincare product then because me, I tell you, no, it do works. Look at me. I right, put back my cap. Queen talk no man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So big up pretty business. I want big up big energy music studio, which is where we shoot our podcast, my people. And for everybody out there, producers, DJs, singers, contact with man, link with man. This is a place to be. You see, so I could get into the podcast now. What's up, our lovely guest? I'm doing well. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> do you mind introduce yourself to? The beautiful audience. Hello, everyone. My name is Tiffany. Yeah, Tiffany. I'm wanting <laughs> to pronounce it right. Make it sound with liquor style. Tiffany. <laughs> 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 All right. So, guys, um, we have Tiffany um, right here sitting with us. Um, my sister, um, believe you me, we adore her so much. And she's here to tell us our life story. Although Queen did a Shub me and say, baby, it's not a life story. This is more like a what, queen? A testimony. <laughs> yes, I won't say testimony, my people. It's a testimony. And I think everybody life have a testimony, isn't it? Because everybody have an upbringing. It might be good. It might be bad. It might be middle. But everybody have an upbringing. Me, me have one. Me not think, you have none, baby? Of course. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're going to get into the um, round the table talk, my people. And remember, round the table talk, it's all about bringing up different topics and conversation, inviting new audience to the table. You see me? So make sure you like, subscribe, and share out the channel. Let's see it. Get into the matter, my baby. Okay. Um, so, Tiffany, um, as we all know, um, could you give us a little history of your upbringing? Okay, so for me, um, I am Jamaican. I grew up in Jamaica. <laughs> and, you know, I grew up in a Christian home where it's well-structured. And one of which you also call, um, I grew up in a proper home. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I am pretty grateful for that because um, it helped to mold me into the person I am today and I can pass it on to my children. Good. Um, growing up in Jamaica, I grew up with my, like a family home, like with my mom, grandmother, grandfather and aunts and uncle and mainly my mom and aunt because the rest of them eventually migrate to America. Yeah. Um, I would say Canada. But it was pretty good. Um, it wasn't um, when you were when you're younger, and you're growing up in a Christian home. If you're Jamaican, then you know how that can be at times. You think, it you, you it think is you, well strict. Yeah, you think well them too much. Them too much. Yes, <laughs> church. I don't mind because I love church. I love going to church with your friends because that's what I grew up in. So it become the norm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so it wasn't. Um, somewhat of a pressure for me because it was just a norm. That's what I grew up in from oh, a baby. So you just love it. Yeah, children yeah. live what they learn. Yes, Always yeah. remember that. Children live what they learn. Yeah. And you know what too, when we can um like attest to like in Jamaica, when you used to go to church, it was so much fun. Yeah. You used to want to go to church. Sunday yeah. school, yes, can't miss you. Yeah. Yes. Free ice fellowship. cream. All of these things here. So <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, always fun. Yeah, so growing up in the church, I can't go out, yeah. Okay, so um, like what school you used to attend? Well, um, <laughs> it's funny, but um, the schools, because I grew up in a crossroad area, um, I never go to the school 
over in that area. I went yeah. to school um, in Waterhouse, where the next side of my family is um, my father's side of the family. And it's a well-together home. They're very neat, tight. Um, there wasn't too much... Um, well, there was discipline, but not as strict as my as your next as a next yes. home, yeah. Because you don't have to go to church, but you can't do certain things. So, which one of the home they made it prefer? Well, I kind of like my father's side because <laughs> <laughs> it give more you more lenient. Uh, yeah, it give you a more um, breadth ear. Yes, you yeah. know when I'm at home, then it's more like it is so strict. You don't get time to. Nothing ungodliness you can do, which is good. I love yeah, that yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. my children, I do the same. Yeah, but remember, a you child know? always want to be a child, and yes. most things a child is always ungodly. You know, we not really. You understand me? <laughs> so we not think before we do yeah. things. You understand? So believe you me. Which is, I mean, we're born into sin, mm -hmm. but it's still good for your parents to reinforce, you know, godliness in the home. So now that I'm older. I kind of decipher both, you know, and look at it and I'm like, okay, you wait out. Yeah. I'm like, okay, it was so strict, but it helped me into being so godly and yeah. to understand kingdom business and the principle yeah, of God. Yeah. Now on the other side, if I was more of on my father's side, I would be more... Cossy and ungodly. Yeah, yeah, road -y. Yeah, be more road -y, yeah. I mean, we wouldn't be on the road because they were strict, but it would be more like, you get to like curse. Oh. They would, they would hit you, but it's not as much it reinforced because yeah, yeah. then when I'm there, when I get you got to a grandma, curse. you know you can't do certain things. And when you go yes. by yourself, you will get a little lady and say you would do it sometime. Yeah, the other grandmother is not <laughs> yeah. that. But I can bet you sometime when you're over your far over like over your father's side, it's like sometimes you just want to go back home to that strictness. Like you want go some of the time you know like No, nah, not really. For real? No. <laughs> as a kid, come on. <laughs> not with the love. Cause the thing is, um on my mom's side where I grew up. Um, I don't know if you know, when you're growing in a Christian home in Jamaica, mm. sometimes it can be, it's good, but at times it can be overwhelming. Yeah, true, um, true. Where they're so strict, the least little thing you, you get a, a beating for it. Yeah, yeah. And you don't get time. So that was my home. You can't do certain things. No, when I'm on my father's side, my grandmother and uncles, they're more mm. relaxed, you know, but the thing is, I so I went to school in Waterhouse, and I I don't even the school name Papa George Basic School. I don't know, but it's Papa still George. I don't know if it's still there. I don't know. But the when I started primary school, um, it was at Saint Patrick's Primary. Yo, I know that primary yeah. school eh? because it's a family we. Yeah, you're you're you're, you're, you're the camera man around there by <laughs> primary bed. school. Yo, we have history there. So my first it's girlfriend used to go to St. Patrick's school. Yeah. Because <laughs> we used to go to Balmaji. Oh, Balmaji. Yeah. No. The rival we call the, the bad school. <laughs> the it's school. It's the bad school. Balmaji had the bad school and um St. Patrick is more good, principal. Good up. When, when, yeah. they, when they get a girl, we go St. Patrick, you get class, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That we used to say. And primary school, you know yeah. about that? It's that after in the ghetto. Son. That's yeah. in the ghetto, baby. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so it's you say I went to St. Patrick's school. Yeah. yeah, and because the old family um, and my father sat in Waterhouse went to that school, you know, my mom would have to send us there. So that's a school um, I went to then. Yeah. And then you stray after high school. What high school did you Which, um, um, Vaxal. I wasn't pleased with it, but at least my past. Why? Why you didn't please with it? You did work enough for God to send. You did work what? enough for God Alpha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was my school. That, that was your school? Yeah. Alpha and St. Huge. But um, I think in the latter part um, of primary school, because you know when you do your first chance or your second? Yeah. No, my first chance, my past was Alpha. Oh. And then I never get it because I was too young. And oh. when you do your first choice sometime back then, you I don't remember how much chance them give you, but when you do the first one, sometimes they don't give it to you. Like you get the second one. Because it wasn't like now where you do um, just one. 
You don't remember? Mem- remember, like when you did, remember, remember when you do no, like you get three, was three choices. You get three choices. So the first yeah. one I didn't get, but the second one, one oh, you get it. You get it, yeah. And well, if not, first, uh, no. So all right, I mean, this is what I remember with common entrance. Um, you did it in five grade, mm-hmm. then you do it sixth six grade, grade yeah. and if you're if you're born after the school year, like me, you get a third chance. A third chance, chance yeah. Yeah. Yes. But for me, I didn't get it. I don't know why. I think I was, because when I start high school, I was 11 going 12. No, oh. it was 12. But when I get it before, somewhat, whatever, they say I was too young. Oh. And then my grandmother because came I think me over start there. High school, yeah. me, me, yeah. She me came over when the me school. I got high school. Um, when me I got high school, most of the people them were passing in a five grade. They were 10. They were 10 because me have, me have a friend who passed yeah. in a five grade. I mean, I didn't see him eight. But yeah. really, when him there high school, me still there primary school because me couldn't take the exam because I don't know me too brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even rem- remember. Only thing I remember when my grandmother come over to school, she was unruly <laughs> to, the, to the father and but, everybody because mm. she was upset. So what was it like but, um, going to um, Vauxhall though? What was it like for you? Though? I mean, it wasn't my school choice, but it was okay. Um, Vauxhall, it was different. I never heard of Vauxhall. Until, uh, you know, when you go and you get your way pass for. Mm-hmm. It was Vauxhall, but... I didn't know what school that was. Oh, so you didn't it pick was, for uh, that school? Well, you no, know, it good, was, good school? Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, but at the time it was more like a, um, because you know, it's you remember day. in second, school, yeah, man, it was them second, second, second high school choice, at the time. Man, yeah. It was a high school. No, it wasn't second choice. Back then you forgot like they place it A, B and C. Yeah. And then your name don't come in paper unless you pass back then. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. My name was in paper, so I passed Vaxa, which um, by the time me for pass, it was already high school. A high school. Before oh. my mom tell me, because I didn't understand, she was oh. like, it was a secondary yeah, school my, before. my brothers and sisters, oh. all of so, my three brothers and sisters didn't go Vaxa. Oh, so did you finish out um, high school? No. You didn't finish out high school. <laughs> <laughs> so Kara kept me could Kara snug the road. So but why you never um actually finish out high school? What happened? Make you never finish out high school. You get kicked? No. Well, um, make it to the 10th grade. Yeah. And while in the 10th grade, um, you know, my mom, like how it happened. Um, grow up, as I tell you, in a strict home. Mm-hmm. Grandmother, we don't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Nowhere at all. Um, it's just from church to home. And so we were going to church um, in Jonestown. My grandmother, that was our base church. Yeah. Before we went off to... Um, so I, no, I was actually... I grew up in that church, but then I also went to a church on Slipen Road called Pen- some Emmanuel Pentecostal. Now, there was an aunt in, because now at the time I'm a teenager, it's just my mom, my grandmother, my grandfather died um, when we were pretty younger. So I'm an auntie and my two cousins. Yeah. Now, when I met this aunt, in Jonestown. I love her. She's nice. She's just big up, different. Big up auntie. Big she up herself. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> condolence. My soul rest in peace. Isn't yeah. It? And so she was one of like my mom's favorite sister. So we would sneak from church just to run down our house. <laughs> and then we get beaten because my grandmother, she just don't want we in certain area. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah, said yeah, Jonestown yeah, yeah, is yeah, not, yeah, a, yeah, good not a good place. Not a good place for you. And, but, you know, you didn't understand your children. And yeah. when I got on my auntie, yeah, that now is a tenement yard. Mm-hmm. Oh. Different people, different so families. So that means you know what is a tenement so this is, yard. this is where I learned mm-hmm. um, about tenement yard. You didn't have any, for me personally, I didn't have knowledge of what really was yeah, going inside on. Pitney. Because yeah, we're no, so no, inside, yeah. Yeah, 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 inside So Pitney. when I got Johnson, I was like, you know, you met, met a friend named live in a yard with our family too. Yeah. And it was different. Everything just lay back, so you kind of like, like that. Yeah, 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 I yeah. Love, love that. that. Yeah. Love. More you have to emphasize with love yeah. that. <laughs> and, you know, even though I was like more of a shy person still. Yeah, yeah, same um, way. So we went down there and we would sneak out when we get a break from church between Sunday school before service start. And then sometimes we get a beat and whatever, because somebody always told grandmother. But one day, like, 
my aunt say, you know, you, you can come down here, she got ask your mother, yeah. whatever, whatever. And we went to my mom said, you know, she don't want to send us down there because her grandmother don't agree. It, she don't like the area. She just scared for us. Oh, that your mother or your My grand, mom. Your mother. Oh, and okay. then my grandmother find out, she's like, no, they're not going there. That is a bad place, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. But we didn't understand. So my grandmother was so strict. She tell my mom, no, don't send them down there. You never can tell what happened to them. Yeah. You know, it's the ghetto, this, that, whatever. Even though Crossroad... Crossroad is right not there, far, so. yeah, it's far, like both, but it's still yeah, kind of different. You know, when you live a crossroad, you can't know different from when you live a jungle. Yeah, it's yeah, different. I yeah, understand. So, Even when Lindos, if what, let me tell you, so once yeah. you're in a jungle, people you're can't different. say that you're good. Yeah, you're in the crossroad <laughs> yeah, yeah, area. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> so my mom eventually, like my aunt would say, you know, why you don't want them down here, you know? Nothing is wrong with us. So mm. my mom kind of, I think she felt sorry. Yeah. And said, okay, it, it make it look like because you're the type of area like no yeah, body want their children yeah, down yeah. there. Yeah, it's like a discrimination yeah. start. No, why them can't come so down here? So she override that and had us like went to, yeah. to Johnson. So she said, okay, just for the weekend. And we were like excited to go down there and... That's where everything learning a difference that we never seen before. Yeah, every, like everything. Like the cussing and everything. The, the fighting. What everything. We say, um, everything. We never, <laughs> not saying we never, but we never see those type mm-hmm. of thing. And like children cuss out their parents. We Get never a life where you never hear nobody cuss their mother yet in a life. And the music. Because <laughs> the yard that we were in, I think it's owned by my, my, my aunt and her husband. Yeah. And so... The yard is, you know, there was um, her family, her father played a big song. Oh. I have a song. Yeah. Like him put up on Sunday. So you kind of like, yeah, wow, like this that, is different. This, yeah. And then because I like to like wind up myself, my broke out, <laughs> yeah. you know. And it was, it was nice. So that's where we keep going and going. going and and going. then for me, coming back to your question, I didn't graduate high school because I got pregnant. Cause me did I got weird. Well, I didn't know. Yes, when you are telling me, oh, you lo- get for love down there. Me did I got ask you say it's so like a down there go find your first boyfriend, you know. <laughs> so we want to the list, you know. You see, let me tell you, you can't be. That is why. No, I'm gonna tell you something. No, this is what my auntie teach me. Pitney can't live at two yard. Definitely. You're not. Definitely. Because you can't imagine if you're the other home. They don't even have that knowledge about them. No, so no. It depends no. on the, the, the home. As I said, I grew up between my, my two grandparents' mm-hmm. home. So, you know, your uncle them watch over you because I have tons of uncle. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah, teenager yeah, yeah. and they're strict. They, they don't beat with, yeah. but they're they're like <laughs> on you. See, them. there's and my family in Waterhouse, there's nobody mm. going to cross the line because they're well be known. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And you know, people know everybody there who they are, so yeah. they don't just cross. Yeah, know. people look so up to the family, different. so they make sure yeah. they look up to the kids. Them so, too. So yeah. like, I want to see if um that look at the neighbor. Yeah, nobody people. touch you. Yeah, in water holes. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, what age did you actually get pregnant? Sixteen. Sixteen. When I just turned sixteen, yeah. So you say, um, so you say, you, you, um, you, you got, you start go to jungle, you get pregnant, you get not drop jungle, Jonestown. Jonestown, mm-hmm. you drop out of school, but. Where your mother did think about you dropping out of school. Uh, and when your, your, fa- oh, your grandmother, where did, you did, did that protect you so Ooh. much? Where did that tell you? So listen to me. Oh. Don't go down there and you're gone. Like, where, where them... No, where not them I say. gone. My mama lost. Yeah, me know, man. But yeah. them, them tell you, say, most about at the same time, you're one of them repress it because you want to be there. No, when well, my mom, she override my grandmother. Oh. My grandmother said, no, don't send them, but because she don't like... um you know, certain area. But my mom, as I said, because I think she loved her sister, guilt she feel I think, like guilt. Uh, yeah. yeah, she feels, that's what she said. Y- she yes, feel I think guilty. that, yeah, I think that was it. But, um, going down there, yeah, we down there, and she said, but I like this one boy, which was Stacey's brother, yeah. Mm-hmm. My sister, she, she likes Stacey's brother, another brother, the bigger one. Yeah. And I like the younger one. <laughs> yeah. But, my sister was, because she's my bigger sister, and it's just the two of us. So she watch over me and protect him. Oh. And she's like, no, I like him. So you can't have a boyfriend. I'm like, I like him first. <laughs> so, but the thing is, 
you know, my sister was so strict. Mm. So you kind of like, you know, big sister, you kind of like dress yeah, back. Yeah, dress back. I have listen to Sissy yeah, yeah, but still like, and then there was um, fast forwarding. Mm-hmm. I got pregnant. My grandmother, she was. She already strict. You know, in a mm. Christian home at the time, you don't get to stay home when you get pregnant. Um, most, a lot of Christian home, you're going to get trolled. But this is what plague our community for real. You see, most of these Christian homes, you see when a child got pregnant, them push them out. Them instead don't, of pull instead them of in. Pull them in closer. And it don't just happen to my sister alone. Mm-hmm. It happened right now in, as we're speaking. And it just happened a couple of days before. And it's coming again. Yeah. And especially, not only, you know, you can just imagine, not only your family turned them back on you, but even the church. Yeah. Yeah. Turned them back on you. Because like, people so always try to please the church. You understand? Always. Yeah, yes. I always try to please the church. So get on again, my sister. Sorry for God. <laughs> so, okay sure then. The so clear. all right, my next question now <laughs> leading. Um so so you, they were angry that you got pregnant, right? Yeah. Everybody was um angry. Yeah, I think they were disappointed. Disappointed. Yeah, I would say. Right? So, so but yeah. before you ask her, so yeah, so not even your aunt that you go down there was was like supporting you at the moment. Everybody was like, why did this happen to you? Are well, I mean, for my mom, she couldn't understand. But my grandmother, she was very rad. She said, I told you not to send them in those areas because, you know, you open them to a lot. Oh, so your grandmother wasn't taking um, it out other than you, but your mom, she was well, taking it I out. Well, I mean, she, she was disappointed. So one of the things is, um, so when I got pregnant, my grandmother found out she was upset. And she was rad. She said, okay, we can't have this in here. This is the house of God. We, this is embarrassing because as my grandmother, she kind of hold a standard. So mm-hmm. certain things is just disappointing and you can't be in there. Yeah. So she said, you know, this is ungodly. We can't have this type of situation. So it's part. So she decided um, that my mom have to do something, but we can't live there. Okay. So now my mom is like, she's distraught. She yeah. don't know what to do. And by that time, my family already left Waterhouse oh. because they all migrated um, between England and America. So it's like empty. Yeah, the yeah. house is there and all three houses have been rented out. So it's oh. like nobody there. Um, so, yeah, um, I didn't have any support. My grandmother was very strict. I knew that this is it. I actually knew because... I know my grandmother. I know in her house, there can't be any pregnancy in there mm-hmm. like that. So she, you know, she told my mom she have to leave and um, wherever. Take wherever. us with her. Okay. Yeah, so, so that's where, where my mom. End up? Well, my mom, I had a stepfather at the time. Um, which was pretty much in our life, but my mom and him wasn't living together. Yeah. And he was living close to the airport. And so it was, we were welcoming there. It was fine for us to go there. But I think because, um, I, you know, with my mom, I think she was so disappointed. She was a young mother. Yeah. And she didn't know how to deal with it. Because yeah. remember, getting pregnant, your mom is throwing you out. Even though, you know, my mom is she's still living at home with her mother because okay. most Jamaican also sometimes yeah, you're living yeah, there. Yeah, it's okay, yeah, it's yeah. normal. Oh, it's the start, norm. Yeah, yeah. I think just, she probably thinks you start make it hard for she, you know, that she yes. has to go find somewhere yes. to live. So it's like, it's like a, like a damping you know, or and she towards you, you know, and so forth. Yeah, so I'm not used to it because I'm used to my mom, just family together. Yeah, yeah. Even though, you know, the strictness, it's okay, but... Uh, my mom went to live with my stepfather. And I was like, where am I going? So she took me to Jonestown. Oh, back to the, back same, to place. the same place. And that was traumatizing for me because nobody knew what happened. Um, oh, so you went to live with your aunt or? Went to live with the baby. aunt. Okay. And so I didn't understand because at the time I was asking my mom, why can't I come with her? Mm-hmm. And she's like, mm, just stay down here. 
But I was yeah. traumatized based on what had happened to me and oh, I knew I get pregnant. Yeah, nobody yeah, yeah. knew. Nobody else knew. Yeah, and I was yeah. scared to tell anyone. Um, I didn't tell my mom. Um, this is not even something that I sit and talk about. Yeah, like yeah. with my mom. Because, you know, it's not like because it's just in your past. It's something that God has redeemed me from. And I understand the this life process that we all go through. Sometimes... You know, we have to go through it. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's not what we want, but it happened. It Life happened. happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's the past. Mm -hmm. But I went, <laughs> I went to And it's to supposed Jonestown. to make you feel stronger. And it's supposed to make your past. You see your yeah. past. So once you get over it, it's supposed to make you feel like. Yeah, a, it doesn't like, define me. Yeah, yeah. you see me? So um, I went to Jonestown and my aunt She's okay. You know, she's okay. She was relaxed. But then I'm I'm open to the same person. Okay. I am 16. This person in his in his 20s. I I didn't want it. Mm -hmm. But because I have no other choice, I'm down there. Things are going to force. So I just kind of play with it. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I would say this. Sometimes people, like for me personally, when I first talk about this. It took me years, not because I haven't get over it. It's because it wasn't time. And I have to allow the Holy Spirit because I don't talk much. Yeah. For me personally, I have to allow the Holy Spirit to Lead, use yeah. me and speak through me. Yeah. yeah. And so when I share that testimony, um, it was there at that time that God want me to, to, to talk share about it. To talk it. about yeah. it, yeah. So I was in Jonestown. It was terrifying for me. Um, I had to like hide a lot of stuff and just move, go with the flow. Go with the flow, yeah, because you yeah. yeah, figure out life because you're still baby, you yeah. know. Yeah. Because as I must say, it good that you can get over things because where you remember, mm -hmm. you was a baby. Yeah. You was a child. You yeah. understand? And yeah. yeah you, you Especially have, when you're not out there. Yes. So it was like, um, a shock for me mm -hmm. because I'm not used to certain things. So it was a big shock. Yeah, because you have some 15 year old, you can't talk to them right now. You're aging you know, them bigger than you. Yeah. You because understand? of how they're yeah. brought up. Brought so. up. You understand? Yeah. yeah. So um, my mom went on. She would come and visit me. Um, now, for my doctor visit, I would have to. This lady was, another lady was in the yard, so much people. And I didn't have anybody to take me because when I went to the clinic, it was a clinic in, I um, can't remember where, but it's yeah. somewhere in that era. Um, I was too young. So you'd have to have somebody there. Yeah. So she agreed to take me to every clinic because my wow. mom was still distraught. She She's like, no, I can't do that. My aunt said, well, you have to take her to a clinic. And she was like, no, you know, because... I mean, the disappointment, everything. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I mean, I understand because now she's out there. She she gets thrown out. Too. So it's mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And sometimes we mm -hmm. don't know what parents them go to mentally, physically. Yes. You so understand? You didn't, um, you didn't go to Women's Center and... I don't know if yeah, I went to Women's Center. Oh, you went to Women's yeah, Center? Yeah, because I had to go there. Right. And so my grandmother forced it. She said, well... She called my mom and said, she called me in a meeting at the house. And she said, you know, you disappoint me. But um, I mean, my grandmother, she's a very hard person. Very hard. It, um, I would say some point of hers are unloving. Mm -hmm. She ever, like, she struggled between love. And it. Yeah. So she's not fully there. <laughs> Having complete love yeah. where God talk about complete love. Completely, yeah. But... I understand. So we, I went to her in a meeting and she was telling my mom to come by the house because she needed to take me to school to get in my mom. You know, my mom had lost, I guess, hope in everything. Yeah. So, which was fine at the time. But anyway, I went to the woman's center. What, what's that? Um, what's that, baby? May you ask about that? What's that? Woman's center. So it's for um teenage... um. Pregnant Deep girls. Pregnant, yeah. When you get pregnant in high school. Yeah, oh, it's a school. school. You continue yeah. your school. school. Oh, the, right. the, like them wear black and white. Black and white. Yeah. So a woman sent her name. Yeah. But that was good. You further had the education wise. Young woman Christian. Um, what, what is it? Like you'd have the that YMCA good. for the yeah. man. Yeah, that's it's the right. woman. Well, that good. Continue. Yeah. Sis, that good. So um, 
I, you know, I didn't went there immediately. Yeah. It was after. So I have a hard shoe in. The, the lady followed me to every clinic meeting, um, clinic um, appointment, um, which was good. And everything was stressful, to be honest with you, because I couldn't understand and I didn't want to live down there. Mm -hmm. But a lot of things I had to pretend. And sometimes, you know, at the time people think, oh, I was so in love with this person. But they don't know. I had to do what I have to do but, you know, because I have no other choice. You know, I sit down and listen to you, my sister. Mm -hmm. Wait, you think if you did tell your mother at the you present moment, difference. you think it would make a difference? Like, well, even your grand, if you say, you say the rebel, mm -hmm. if you did ever tell her everything, getting everything, everything mm -hmm. crashing up. Yeah, if you did tell her, she would have been more, she would be more I passionate. Would say, no, no. Sometimes, you know, unless someone go through it, then they'll understand. understand. The That's fear, true. the fear and the threat is something that um, you're not going to just, oh, let me just talk. You can have a home and you grow your children um, to, you know, be more open and tell you things. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, when they go through certain things, especially yeah, yeah, go they, through yeah, it, you're yeah, not yeah. going to get that. They're I'm telling get, you. Yeah, yeah. So... It was terrifying. You just have to just enjoy. And I think at the time, nobody took the time to really sit down and talk to me. It mm. was more like punishment. Everyone I, was angry. No I one was really a said. It was a baby. And, and you don't know yeah. how to, to even explain it to somebody. I think if someone had said, this is why I didn't say anything. Because one of the things is, yes, the threat is there, but... If if I someone had sit with me and mm -hmm. really try to understand, because one of the things, you know, everyone was saying, oh, you're bad, that's why you get pregnant. Mm -hmm. All my aunts, and they were like, oh, you're bad, can you get pregnant? And you do this and you do that. So it was like our yeah, condemnation. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. you're not going to open, open to, to that. them type of people. Because everybody, yeah. when you get pregnant in Jamaica, think you're bad. In mm, school. Definitely. And it definitely. can be your first time. <laughs> it can be your second but time. But most of the school girls, they know them first time they yeah, do it. They always people just end up, think, wind up um, pregnant. They didn't know. They, yeah. They just first think that you're money, money. And so nobody give me the opportunity, I would say, to speak. to speak. I was just in fear. And I was a fearful person anyway. I would, I'm covered of everything back then. Um, but I stood it out. Those mm. were the times I formed such a deep relationship with God. Not that I didn't have a relationship with God, but every this there wasn't much distraction. As a child, while you're pregnant? Yes. Yeah, so there was me and God to me. Yeah. Um, I mean, growing up in church, there's a lot of distraction because you have everybody. But when you're you're back against the wall and you're down, it's mm -hmm. just you and God. You and God, yeah. And I knew when I said, God, you know what's going on? And I can't tell anybody I'm scared. I'm scared of this particular person. What if? So I have to just pretend everything. Yeah, yeah. And I can't say anything because the person is bossy and in control. So I just flow with it. Yeah. And so I had the baby. And then, <laughs> um, which the person ended up move. Yeah. And I didn't want to go, but he said, you have to come. Well, I didn't have any choice. Mm -hmm. As I said, it was demanded yeah, and yeah. it was different. It was still a child, same yes. way. Yes. You still like, get manipulated, so, same way. Yeah. So I went, we moved to Oak Road and that was when everything mostly, where I get the time to, it's God and me. Yeah. Yeah, in Johnstown. But now at that time, it was like a difference. Now my son was little at the time. I gotten pregnant again. Because I didn't understand. By the same actual person? Yeah, because who else? I'm living now with the person. Because the person is like, I said, I didn't want to go to Oprah. I'm not moving mm -hmm. with you. It's like, well, you have no choice. You have to come. And if you ever, you know, you used to yeah, threaten yeah, me. If, if you, you do tell that, your auntie. Up, man, that up, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just a big threat if you tell who, what, yeah, where. Yeah, yeah. So I had to just follow Whoa. in everything. And when I reach to Oprah, that was the, that was, it It was the worst time. Icebreaker. Yeah, it was bad. It was like a year, probably a year and a half worth of, it was terrible. Wow. And that's where I was, you know, beaten physically a lot, like almost every day. 
And I'm not used to this. I mean, you get being afraid of parents, but I'm not used to living with a man. This is not what I want. So being there and this person would beat me constantly. And you would be like, what, was 16, at the 17 at I that I was year? 17 now, so I was pregnant again. And I didn't understand because I didn't even know, I mean, you can't get pregnant again. You know... Looking yeah, back, you, I still didn't understand at 17. Baby. Just believe me, you was why a baby. Why am I pregnant again? Remember, you was a sheltered kid as yeah. well. So yeah. you can't blame yourself. Why you never know this? Why you never know no, that? No, I don't blame myself. At the time, I, I questioned it. How am I pregnant again? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> yeah. No, maybe you would have a meet at Jamaica. So when you have baby and your period... No it's come, real, though. You cannot get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> You no, know, when you have baby, pregnant. you easily get pregnant. That's yeah. exactly. I mean, you think, I, that's, yeah, it's, I think, it's I think real. it's more, yeah. you're it more free up now. Your first baby can lead to your the, your arms, the next yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, as I was staying there, that's when I draw even more closer to God because I knew I didn't have anybody. Like, I'm telling you, not one little person was there to help me. It was just me and this person and I'm trying now. So you never have a phone, like like nobody could contact you. Who's like... gonna give you a phone? <laughs> so, Everybody so at the time bandage, I was abandoned. You might be under bandage then. Plus nobody now look for you. Nobody not care at the time. To be honest, um, it was just like you that. And nobody the, the cares. Kid him. No, for food because um, I had an aunt still at the house. Yeah, and she would hide me. I would, you know. I would still go by my house. I don't know because I just feel like I want to be home. And I would come down there like from Oak Road and I would walk. And she would hide me and feed me. <laughs> and sometimes my grandmother do catch me and it was Terrible. bad. Yeah. She would grab me and throw me. She's like that. So... I still do it though because wow. my aunt would say, still come, still. And I would say, but I'm scared. Yeah, support. but I'm scared of my grandmother because she 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 she's a she can be a tyrant. Mm -hmm. So I would still go down there because I need food. And where I was living, um, that person would feed me. He would say, Oh, you don't you don't deserve nothing, ears tooting mackerel and whatever. So that was it. That was all to eat. And then, you know, John. things like, oh, your your parents don't care. Your family don't care. They throw you to a man to just beat you and treat you anyway. So that was always his saying when he's hitting on me. We always say, oh, you know, so them don't love you. Them throw you out to me so me can do whatever I want with you. Which was true. You could do whatever you want with me. So, um, guys, this is a lot. Yeah, this is a lot know? because when we want to get to, because we want to get over him, you know. Me too. When was your breaking, breaking point, point when you yes. say, listen to me now? Me, me done, done with you. And if you ever feel like you can't ramp with me, me go call the army. Me ready for you. God got me now. When you decide, say, yo, boy, move well, up. One of the things is, so here comes one day. Um, because I was like 97 pounds. Now I'm a little person. Yeah. I was like a hundred pounds. I can't nothing I can't, more. I can't imagine. But at the time I was 97. <laughs> and kind of, um, I didn't understand back then, but I would say probably a bit malnutrition. Yeah. Malnutrition. I, yeah. Um, my eyes would be like in all and all mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah. So for me, I would beg like a ride every day, a bus ride from Oprah go straight. I don't know where go downtown. I think so. And then from town to wherever I have to go to like look for my mom. Mm -hmm. And it was hard, you know. But anyway, I understand. My mom didn't still didn't take me in. But one day I was, I had the baby. And I would pray consistently every day. I said, God, you have to get me out of here. Now I had the second baby. Second baby, yeah. And I said, God, I, before I had the second baby, I was seven months pregnant. And every day I cried to God, take the baby. I don't want it. Because at the time I'm like, the one God, that I you're can't. In your belly yeah. Because you can't take I have care to of walk one. With, yeah. I'm walking with this little baby. Plus I'm pregnant. Yeah. And it, it, it began to, I said, God, I don't want anything connected to this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm looking at it and I'm saying, God, please get the baby out. You know, I just feel like I just don't want to belong anymore. Yeah, yeah. So one day I kind of like said, okay, I'm going to get the baby out. 
So I, I drop myself. Because, you know, you, you, if you drop, you might go into labor. Yeah, yeah. So I will fully drop. And I said, God, I'm going to drop myself so I can go into labor. Because my thing was, how can I escape this person if I'm still pregnant? Mm -hmm. You know, who's going to take you on in or whatever? In a, yeah, yeah. So I went into labor and the baby barn. And the same day, <laughs> I went into labor. The baby barn, which I was pretty happy. And... I'm looking at the child. I kind of have no connection. I was kind of numb at the time because I, it was life. I didn't understand what was going on. And I said, God, you have to take that baby. And I begged him. I said, take the baby. I don't want it. The baby lived three months old in the incubator. He came out of the incubator. And now he's like three months old, three and a half months old, so... I would go every day to look for the baby, just yeah, me alone, yeah. nobody. I would travel to Spanish Town because I was in Linz at that time, um, visiting one of my uncle, and that's when I went into labor. So they transferred me to Spanish Town Hospital. So I have to travel from Hope Road to Spanish Town to look for the baby every day. And it was stressing. And it's just me alone. Yeah. So and you're not working or nothing at all? Like work weird. Nobody yeah. not hired me. I went to get Jaya. I said, oh, you're 17. Yeah, yeah, baby. So I, you're not even thinking about that. Mm. Work and live where? You don't want to mm. live there. So I actually, um, the baby, the baby lived to see three months and three and a half. They said, oh, the baby's going to go home tomorrow now. Baby big, beautiful, whatever. And I'm looking at the baby and I'm like, no, I don't want that. She when I can deal with because he's already here. Even though I'm looking at a child, it's already here, but I I don't want yeah, no attachment task, because of the trauma mm -hmm. that I'm going through. So I pray. I went home and I pray hard to God. I said, okay, the baby's coming home, God. You need to help me. If the baby come home, I'm here. I have to grow this baby and go through the same thing. And it's going to delay from me trying to run away and escape. Yeah. Because yeah. I was thinking run away, but where to run to? But I know without the child, I can still find a way. Find a way. Yeah. So I started begging my mom to take the Shuen. Mm -hmm. Um, Shuen was probably one at the time. I said, Mom, can you please take him? I don't want him. And she said, you don't want him? I said, no, I don't want him anymore. I can't manage. Um, and you don't know what I'm going through. So anyway, she said, mm, you know, you just have to hang in there. So anyway, she left. The day before, when I left the hospital, went home, and I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there. I said, God, you have to take that child. If I ask you to take that child, it's not bad because he's going right back to heaven with mm -hmm. you. Yeah, because child born with us. Yeah, two. I said, I'm not... Praying for him to dead, to be dead. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. praying for you to take so, him. Yeah, you give me and you can take too him much. back. Yeah. Um, the next day, I woke up and as I was leaving out, they called and they said, um, it was a lady in the front. She had a business, the owner, and she said, oh, you have a phone call. So I went and they said, um, you coming by the hospital? I said, yeah, because you said to come pick the baby up. It's time to go home. And they said, oh, we need to talk to you. And when they said that, I knew. I knew, right? Um, I felt it in my spirit that the baby is dead. Jeez. But I went there and um, I went to Spanish Town Hospital. They said, um, the baby is dead. I said, a healthy baby, you said to. But anyway, I didn't even care. The baby died. And I went to some party at Topsy Place, and um, which they dropped the baby because the brain was like, um, it was the head was like this. Oh. And the lady that was there, she told me that um, this baby dropped. Um, but because you're so young, she said, you have family. I said, I don't care. <laughs> she said, I just want to look. I said, I just want to look at the baby. I really don't care. It's okay. Yeah. I said, it's fine. So. Going forward, I was sitting one day and still going through the trauma, but not long after. And I sat there and I was like, you know, God, I thank you for taking this away from me. I'm so grateful. And I know that child is 
in a better place. Mm. Now I can think of an escape route, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, so no, I'm thinking really, I have to be bounty on China, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and one day I was on Oak Road, and this, you know, when you go to the bus stop on the main, there was this shop. I always see that Rasta lady. And I remember I was so hungry, <laughs> so tired. I probably haven't eaten for two, three days. Whoa. And I feel, I, you know, I feel like I'm passing out. And I was about to give up. And I said, God, I'm going to kill myself. And that day when I saw this big old truck, and I think, you know, at the time that it feels so good to just gone to me because at the time you're thinking nobody love you yeah you're by yourself oh, and it's just you you don't have nobody so as i was stepping out there was this big truck on oprah because it's busy yeah and i saw the truck had chewing in my arm i was like okay this is it i prefer and so as i stepped down i felt like somebody just Robbed me. <laughs> and it was a lady. And this Rasta lady. And she said, what are you doing? Everyone was so frightened at the bus stop. And the truck was blowing his arm. And she grabbed me from behind with the baby. And she sat me in her shop. And she said, what is going on? And I told her, just a little bit, not too much. Yeah. So um, cameraman, yeah. well, uh, cameraman, you can't give me a piece of napkin for me to please, my brother. Please, and thanks. What? Carry, <laughs> carry, 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 carry. Give me a piece of napkin for damp and carry either. Please, and thanks. Eh. <laughs> carry, you can't walk off a set. <laughs> carry, walk God off a set. Oh, it's still a film. <laughs> I can't cut off. Hmm? I can't cut off. As in, you want to come off? Yeah, man, you can't come up. So, guys, give me a minute, the way I get back, okay? All right.